Um, there are other issues in the city, and you guys have issues as well. So I'm opening the floor to some questions. I know that there's been a few that approached me before, and okay. sincerely, sincerely, we're only going to have time for maybe four or five questions. So Gerald uh, Parker um, has approached me with a question. Um, I'm going to give the mic to him. Again, your questions are not to make political speeches or comments. They are simply to ask a question, and I will ask you to do so. All right. A quick context. Uh, vulnerable youth in Durham is a huge and multifaceted challenge. Ontario's second highest cash fare for youth, unemployment and opportunity is limited. The Refuge has a catering company, and I hope you agree that the cities of Oshawa, Whitby, region of Durham, to sole serve such services to these unemployed and vulnerable youth. That would be honourable. That would be hopeful. A lot of shrimp eaters up at the region and jobs for youth accordingly. Leadership requires that school boards, local, regional, provincial, and federal levels and agencies have to have the political will to lead the resolution of the precursors of dysfunction, homelessness, starvation, and forced criminality upon our precious youth and children. Durham, get in there. Durham has only 12 vulnerable beds in Ajax. Our youth need more beds locally, lower cash fares, Ontario's second most expensive transit, reduction thereof, employment of refuge clients, and they need hope. What will you do to commit and ensure more youth vulnerabilities are sold and the refuge is supported? You know, for 200 years, it was the churches that were the safety, the social safety net. They still are. Places like the Refuge, the Salvation Army, Gate 316, St. Vincent's Kitchen, and many others. And they, they led the way. And government eventually in the 20th century got involved in this. But we've seen such a massive cutback, the downloading from the province to, to, the, to the region and the city. Clearly, uh, it's shameful what you just said, that the number of beds available. Uh, for homeless youth. And remember, we talk, we say the word homeless youth, but they're involved with the, the, the street. The, there's human trafficking, there's prostitution, there's drug addiction, there's sexually transmitted diseases, there's assault, there's rape, there's murder. We say homelessness, it takes in a lot more than just that word. And we're talking young people, we're talking child pornography, we're, we're talking sexual. Then we use these nice words, but they mean a lot more. We say child pornography. That's child rape. That's what that is. In viewing that, you are participating in that. I'm not saying you, but in general. So there are social evils. So what, 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 what must we do? It, it goes beyond the matter of education. We need to, we need to have play phone, hotlines, places they can go to, places to stay. Be willing to leave the street to stay in, in, in a hostel or, or somewhere feeling they're not going to be robbed or beaten because many people stay in the street for that reason. We're a small community compared to Toronto, but we have the same social ills. It starts in the home, and that's prevention. But well, we're talking cure right now, and we have a lot to do with this. We need to address it uh, citywide, Durham region-wide, and knocking on the door, Premier Wynn. Thank you. Uh, Bill Longworth. I, I think the suggestion from the questioner was excellent that the city should be compelled or at least obligated, feel obligated, to buy their refreshments and so on uh, for their council members and so on and their meeting, uh, their, their meeting refreshments from a facility like this. And the second thing I would offer, you know, the, the city buys all kinds of services using your tax money to buy services. This is a service that is providing a valuable service to the people of Oshawa. So, how much is Oshawa City Hall paying for the service that you're delivering to the public? And I think that's a very valid, valid question, and it's a, a question I would take up as your new mayor. I think we have an obligation to look after the social ills and if, if there's a, a service being provided, I think City Hall is obligated to pick up part of the cost to, to support it or subsidize it. Again. Thank you. John Gray. Thank you very much. In 2007 there was a study done, it, it, it articulated 
that it cost the Canadian economy $7 billion for homelessness. In 2013, there was a, a report written called The State of Homelessness in Canada. And if you read that report, um, they're very clear. The problem doesn't rest with one level of government, it rests with all levels of government. That's the only way we'll be able to solve this problem. But when you get some levels of government absolutely washing their hands and saying, it's not going to be our problem, it's not a priority, inevitably it comes down to the local level, our communities, where the impacts are felt. And it would just seem to me that we, we will do our best here in Oshawa and at the region, but without the province or the federal government at the table, it's going to make our efforts rather feeble. If they get involved, then maybe we can actually solve the problem. Thank you, John Henry. General, it wasn't that long ago when there was a problem in downtown Oshawa and we were able to create in partnership with the Backdoor Mission and UOIT's Faculty of Humanities the first living classroom to help people who are marginalized in a downtown court. And we went out and not only did we find the furniture to do that, we also found the funding to do that and that's going on now where young people going to school can now work in the area that they're going to work in when they graduate. And I'm really excited tonight because I'm here with the refuge champion of council, Councillor Bellman who's gone to great lengths to help each and every year find ways to fund different activities here. But what's really important is a few years ago there was a problem here at the Refuge. And a call went out to the, to the business community and we were able to come up and solve that problem in a very short period of time, working together as business leaders in this community. It wasn't government money, it was private sector money that came together to make this organization stay and function. I'm proud of what we've been able to do, but we haven't done enough. And working with Clarence and Dave and the staff here, we can do more. And we will do our absolute best to make sure that the refuge services the needs of our, our youth that have half issues for a very long period. Bill Lombard. Yeah, you, you know, City Hall spent $115,000 of your tax money to hire somebody to come in from Toronto to work a month and a half, to write a report, to support what council wanted done, that is firing the Auditor General, eliminating, eliminating the position. Now, I suggest to you, how much better use would the city get out of that $115,000 by giving it to a group like this? I mean, if you have that kind of money around, if you have that kind of money around, let's use it productively for this city. Not to hire a lawyer to come in and do it.